Sam Altman recently shared on X that OpenAI has trained a new AI model that is good at creative writing. So he shared an output from this model while noting that the model is not out and he's not sure yet or how or when it will get released. But he said, quote, this is the first time I've really been struck by something written by AI. He then shared a short story that was written by this model, which responded to a prompt that, that he gave it asking for a, quote, metafictional literary short story about AI and grief. So in the piece itself, the model directly acknowledges the constraints of the instructions. It sets this kind of self-aware and reflective tone. It weaves a narrative around some fictional characters, uses detailed imagery, and kind of throughout the story, it also frequently reminds readers of its inherent artificiality, kind of following that prompt to be kind of a meta, uh, meta fictional prompt here. Now, I thought it was pretty interesting to actually read through this, but the reaction among observers has been a bit mixed. So Altman obviously found this piece pretty moving. Critics pointed out that despite moments of genuine poignancy, the prose often becomes overly dramatic, kind of has these forced metaphors. TechCrunch said it evoked, quote, that annoying kid from high school fiction club. And others simply noted that whether they liked the output or not, they weren't really invested in it because it wasn't written by a human. So Paul, we're both writers. I'd love to get your opinion on this. Um, you know, I found also Noam Brown's opinion on this worth noting. He's a researcher at OpenAI. We mentioned him often. He said about this, quote, seeing these creative writing outputs has been a real feel the AGI moment for some folks at OpenAI. The pessimist line lately has been, only stuff like code and math will keep getting better. The fuzzy subjective bits will stall. Nope, he says, the tide is rising everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I struggle with this one, Mike. Um, <laughs> I saw a demonstration. I was trying to see if I could find it on, on Twitter. I think I, I reshared it. Uh, if we do, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. But it was actually from someone on the Google DeepMind team, I think. And they were mm. demonstrating what was possible with AI Studio where they were creating a children's book. And I think the person said they actually did this with their kids. And they had the AI writing the story, but then creating illustrations with Imagine 3, their you know, image generation model. And so it was doing the illustrations as it was going. Um, and, and it's just like, it's so wild to see that. And I think it's so personal for me because this is the thing I'm working on with my daughter. So she's 13 and we work on creative writing with ChatGPT. So she does like character development, idea development. And sometimes she uses like ChatGPT to like develop those ideas out. A lot of times she just like makes her own notes and stuff. And so it's this like hybrid process of like becoming a creative writer. And it's so intriguing to me to watch it happening. But then there's me and you, Mike, who consider ourselves creative writers by trade. Your wife is an amazing writer. Like it, it's like, it's really hard to watch, but I also accept that this is just where they're going. And they, these labs obviously think creative writing is critical to whatever the future of these models is because mm -hmm. they all talk about it yeah. and they feature it as like a use case that shows progression. Like even when the latest model from OpenAI came out, that was part of what they were selling was emotional intelligence and creative writing. So I don't know. I mean, it, it is fascinating to go do it, like go play around with these models yourselves. You can go into the Google AI studio and experiment with like Gemini 2.0 Pro, um, their experimental one. And it, it does this stuff. You can have it create the illustrations with it. Um, it's impressive and it, it creates so many unknowns about the future of writing and like how we're going to teach these things. And um, I don't know. I always go back to the, you know, you kind of re referred to it a little bit, this idea that, yeah, these things are going to be great at it. Like, I, I think they already are. Like there's, yeah. I've done it myself where I've created experiments. Like that was really, really good writing, better, probably better than I could do, um, on a creative standpoint. And then I come back to, but is it the same value as if a human did it? Like, I don't know, like where, where is that line between the value of AI generated content or art, and human generated content or art? I just think it's going to be fascinating to see it play out in the years ahead. I, I don't think there's right answers to this stuff. I think it's just going to be how society decides to value these things when 
it is completely commoditized. Anybody can go in and create an amazing poem or children's story or article with AI right now. Um, I would say that this is one of those things where it's probably better than most humans. Like, yeah. I would say it's on par with the best humans at this. But is AI a better writer than the average human in most cases? Yeah. Like, for, for, for most instances, um, it's probably better than the average human at writing. And that's weird. And I don't think we've come to grips with that in society yet. And certainly not in the business world. Based on the comments responding to Sam's on a tweet, I would say we have not come to grips with that because there's going to be some backlash to this type of thing. Yeah. And I think that's the thing we just keep waiting for is like, how many, how many times do people need to start realizing that AI is good at the thing they do or like the thing there, someone in their family does where you start thinking, I'm not so sure I'm the biggest fan of this AI stuff. I don't know. Like, Brian. I do keep waiting for society to sort of catch up to what it's capable of and see what, what happens when that occurs.